Wow, so everything I just said. <laughs> I'll just have to cut the video and start from here. Welcome, today is March 19th, day four of quarantine. Uh, we're gonna talk about the electric potential today. Um, I wanna go over a couple of the equations we've uh, done so far, starting with force. Remember, force is KQQ over R squared. And then uh, in order to find out what that force is, you do need two charges. It's an interaction between a pair of charges. Um, in this example, we have a plus and a minus, so that's attractive. And what the force does is basically tells us what the acceleration will be for each charge. Because we can take that force divided by the mass, and that give us the acceleration. Uh, thank you, Dennis, for keeping us on, uh, on track. Uh, but this acceleration is only good for that instant moment. Uh, this is an instantaneous acceleration. That's because as soon as the objects start moving, their separation distance will change. And when the separation distance changes, the force changes. And when the force changes, the acceleration changes. And it goes on and on every you know one iteration at a time, one time frame at a time. You have to recalculate acceleration uh, over and over again. But uh, instead of doing that, we will see that um, we can bypass this struggle by using energy equations instead of you trying to do this with Vovat over and over and over. Okay. The next topic was the electric field. The electric field is KQ over R squared. Um, and this is, uh, uh, this is the strength of the space around a single charge. Okay. Force requires two charges, KQQ, whereas the electric field requires just one charge, KQ. This is the field around a single charge. So if I had a single plus one Q charge uh, and I'm some R distance away, okay, we know that the electric field will point away from the positive in that line of action, away from the positive charge. And the magnitude, we can get it by multiplying KQ and then dividing by R squared. Right? So if I had a different charge, same size, there they could be the same size metal balls, but this second one just lost more electrons. It's positive, but we'll make this one plus 2q. Okay, so it's twice as powerful. So if I am, you know, a similar distance away in R, so this is R as well, okay, how would the electric field be different? Well, with a a stronger charge, the electric field, notice how the charge is twice as much, the electric field will be twice as much. Look for patterns in your equations. The equations aren't there just to do some plug and chug math. Uh, we want to make, you know, be able to make predictions when we change our system. So in this example, we went from a plus one Q to a plus two Q. When we double the charge, the electric field doubles. And we can represent that doubling by drawing a line or an arrow that is twice as long. So twice as long. So it still points the same way, except it is much stronger. Okay. All right. Um, and so, and so when we have electric field vectors, remember vectors you can add them vectorally, basically tip to tail. Uh, if you have multiple charges in the same spot or around on the same part of space, those two charges will up, you know, uh, apply or create their own electric field around them, and the net resultant vector will tell you which way a positive test charge will go. So if you remember the drawing you did, you had a positive charge and a negative charge, plus charge, plus one Q, minus charge, minus one Q. We know how to draw it, but let's see if we can make sense of the drawing. So let's imagine an arbitrary point. This is example three. An arbitrary point. Uh oh, I'm getting a phone call. That's not good. Okay. Uh, arbitrary point. So somewhere around here. So at this spot in space between these two charges. Okay. We know that the electric field from the positive charge will point away from the positive charge in that direction, uh, in a linear line of action direction. Ooh, I like that. So if you draw a line from the center of mass of the charge, 
So along that direction, the electric field will go away from the positive. Okay, And at the same time, the blue negative charge here will pull the electric field towards it. So it has a towards direction. So it would be towards it. Let's use our ruler. Uh, so towards the center of blue, somewhere around there. Now I'm going to draw this one slightly shorter. Uh, the only reason is that even if the charges are the same, plus one in magnitude. Uh, oh no. Uh, plus 1q and minus 1q, even if their magnitudes are the same, notice how we are further away from the minus q charge. So the electric field will be weaker from, from, uh, from the minus q. That's why we have a, a smaller vector. Okay. Now, using our tip-to-tail method, we can see that the resultant vector, oops, there we go. Oops. No. Why isn't this thing moving? Ah, oh, I don't like that. Uh, I'll just draw the arrowhead again. You. Uh, if I do tip to tail, the resultant vector, let's use a different color. Uh, let's use orange. So orange is sigma E. And uh, this vector here is the resultant vector. That happens to be the tangent vector to the curve uh, of the electric field line. Remember, the electric field looks something like this. We, oh gosh, if I can draw it. Uh, it looks like a parabola. Uh, remember, these ones are straight. This one's like a parabola. So. Essentially, it's kind of higher. There, now it's better. Uh, this orange line, the orange arrow, is actually the tangent vector at that spot to the electric field line that curves. Okay, so that's what the resultant electric field means. It is, it is basically the the tangent vector to the electric field line curves that you drew on Monday. Was it Monday? I can't remember. Okay. So when we're adding vectors like this blue one, the blue one is uh, E2 from charge 2. And the red one, which is uh, E1, uh, number 1, the resultant vector tells us the uh, the tangent to the curve itself. Okay, so that was electric field. Finally, yesterday we started talking about potential. Okay. Similar to the electric field, which uh, which exists around a single charge, the electric potential is also around a single charge. Uh, one of the primary differences is that the potential is a is, is a scalar instead of a vector, which is good for us. Now we don't have to worry about vector components. No more Pythagorean theorem. When you have scalars like V, so electric potential, electric potential, which is V, it's capital V, not lowercase v. And I use little serifs uh, for the difference. Actually, I shouldn't do that yet. So let's not do that yet. Capital V. So capital V by itself is called a potential, electric potential. And the units for V is also V. V, which is uh, volts. The units are Vs, which is, uh, which stands for volts. Similar to gravitational potential, if you remember gravitational potential energy, pegmaga, um, 
if I if I compare this to gravity, we know that PEG is equal to MGH, okay? Okay. And we can separate this. It's M times GH. This GH value tells us what the what the value of space is, uh, you know, based on a certain distance away from the ground. And if I put any m mass uh, at that height, I will instantly get how much potential uh, gravitational potential energy it has. Okay. Similarly, we can also equate the electric potential energy PEE. -E, energy must be equal to instead of mass we're going to use charge and instead of this gravity times height uh, we're going to use this thing called potential electric potential V okay so what is V well V is a way for us to figure out what the energy will be for a charge V is another mapping of space where this is a, a scalar quantity. V is scalar, which means it has no direction. Uh, does not have direction. Okay, it's just a value, but it can be plus or minus. However, okay, um, with our electric field equations and our charge equations, remember uh, we are doing the absolute value. So I'll just I'll just absolute value the whole thing. But you're absolute valuing the uh, the charges. You can't plug in the plus or minus Q, uh, sorry minus Qs because uh, that'll give you a negative force. You have to find the direction on your own based on the law of attraction. So if they're you know, uh, repelling or attracting, you have to figure out the direction based on that instead of what the uh, plus or minus will give you. Same thing with electric field. Uh, now if you actually use like R hat vector, uh, you know, you can actually get away uh, uh, with this. You would say this is E, blah, 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 and the R hat vector, but you know, we don't really do that in, in honors physics. Consider taking AP Physics C if you want to learn more about R hats. Uh, in any case, uh, when we do it, again, we're finding the magnitude of electric field, so we're going to go ahead and just absolute value that as well, uh, and then just determine the direction on our own based on whether or not it's a positive charge or a negative charge. If it's positive, it's going away from it. If it's negative, it's going towards it. So that's how we determine the direction. Whereas V has no direction, Therefore, we don't have to take absolute values. So, uh, but V can be positive or negative, meaning go ahead and plug in the actual plus or minus Q. Make sure to plug in negative Q if Q is negative, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Recall that when we did forces, or uh, we always plugged in positive charges. But with V, if Q is negative, make sure you put negative. That way we get negative volts. And negative volts is okay. Uh, it doesn't mean negative energy or anything, but uh, it's all relative to some point. Okay, so what is potential? Well, potential is a way of seeing space. So let's imagine having a positive charge and this positive charge exists in space, like so. So nothing else around it. It's far away from everything else. And having a positive charge like this uh, means that the closer I get, um, the higher the potential value is. Because V, if you take a look at your clippy, V is equal to K times single Q divided by single R. 
kk over r. Therefore, the closer I get, the smaller this r value is, the greater the value of our vol uh, v, our potential. You want to imagine uh, kind of like a mountain. Uh, and, these, and the side of this mountain, or this volcano, whatever it is, uh, is basically that 1 over r function or sorry, k over r. Okay. So around, um, around this positive charge, we're drawing this mountain top. Uh, here we go. Okay. So looking at, uh, in 3D space, uh, this positive charge is creating this mountain of potential. This is a theoretical concept, uh, an abstract concept, a mountain of potential. Because I want you to I want you to see this as if you would see gravity. Basically, if you're at the top of a mountain, right, you would have a lot of gravitational potential energy. Remember, peg my guy, it's dependent on H. So the higher you are, uh, the more gravitational potential energy you have. And so the closer you are, closer uh, in the, you know, in the, this axis here. So if the charge was at the origin, uh, the closer you are, the stronger that, that potential is. Okay. And it kind of, uh, now there's no really way, uh, real way to get to zero R, because once you get to zero, you plug in a zero, you actually shoot off to infinity. Whoa, but but typically you there is a limit to how close you can get to a charge. Uh, it's basically the body. Um, once you get to the body, you've kind of uh, you've kind of reached its limit, and that's how tall your mountain should be realistically. But uh, you know theoretically, if you, uh, if you can go inside the body of the charge, then it will just keep on going and then shoot off to an infinite height, an infinitely tall mountain. So therefore, you would have infinite amount of energy, I suppose, which doesn't really make sense. And that's why we can't go in. Um, consider taking AB Physics C to learn how the charge doesn't even exist. Oh, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, so we have this mountain. And at different distances, at different distances away from away from the charge so maybe at like this distance you see that it is a different height meaning the further away we go the weaker it gets whereas negative charges you want to look at it as like a, a trench down below into the into the depths of the ocean uh, a negative charge Uh, a negative charge creates an upside down mountain. Anyone remember where you where we have like these flat top mountains? Isn't it like South America and like Chile or something? I can't remember. Uh, if you know, please type in chat where you've seen these flat top mountains. It's not really like a volcano, but it's an actual mountain, but it's like super flat. I think it's chilly. Someone, if you know. Uh, <laughs> so, so uh, with a negative charge, we have a uh, we have an upside down mountain, and that the closer we get, uh, technically, if you're at again at zero r, you would shoot off to uh, negative infinity. Whoa, I'm gonna fall forever. Uh, but again, theoretically, you should not be able to go inside the body. Okay, these circles I'm drawing uh, represent kind of like different heights at different uh, distances away from, from the center. So if this were at the origin, then at this distance, we were at this height or this depth below the ground.
Okay, so we have a mountain and this trench thing. All right, so that's the conceptual understanding of what potential is. So electric potential, we want to relate it to gravitational potential in that it kind of represents the gravity times the height value, meaning um, the higher you are up a mountain, the more potential energy you're going to have. Now, if you go below ground, technically you have negative potential energy with respect to the ground being zero energy. Right? Remember, we can actually set our initial height to be zero at any way relative to the ground. You know, being below ground gives you negative peg mega, whereas you know, being above the ground would give you positive peg mega. Peg mega. Here it is. Peg mega. Uh, Mr. Z, can I rewind this? Uh, yeah, remember, once I end the stream, you can actually go to the video section and just watch the whole thing. Uh, of course, I also upload it into the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe there. Uh, and then you can watch the vo uh, VOD uh, later. The potential is kind of like a, a, a circle around your charge. So let's do some other models. So let's say I have a positive charge of, uh, let's use some numbers. You all have your calculators out, or you can use Desmos, or you can use wolframalpha.com. So let's say this is a plus one microcoulomb charge. Uh, one second. All right, so one microcoulomb charge, and uh, and we'll go ahead and be you know some ten centimeters away. Shall we be ten centimeters? Yeah, ten centimeters away. Okay. So what is the electric potential? So what is the electric potential? Now, uh, make sure you read the uh, words carefully. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can also do that because um, the Twitch, I believe, like continuously records. So you can actually do that. Go to the video section. And then once the, the vi video ends, you can come back to live. Um, make sure you read the questions carefully. Uh, if it says electric potential, we're talking about V. Um, if it says electric potential, potential energy, then we're talking about energy, which is the PEE, -E, the potential and electric potential energy. So this one just says electric potential. So that's just V. And we know that V is equal to K times Q divided by a single R. Okay. And we know that it's a scalar, so we don't have to worry about, um, you know, vector components and stuff. So what does this mean? Well, it means that there's a a certain amount of potential it's like the elevation height based on this distance um, you know how tall is the mountain when I am uh, you know 10 centimeters away so how high is this that's what we're trying to find okay and uh, and we have maps called contour maps and these contour maps do the exact same thing uh, <laughs> Kuya is here. Hey, Casey. Kuya, Casey is here. All right. Uh, so that would be 9E9, the same K, times the charge, which is 1 microcoulomb. Yeah. Anyone uh, remember what micro is? Chat. Uh, what is micro, the mu? You know, 1 times 10. Uh, uh, hey, thanks for following Crafty Alligator. Kuya, Casey, what's micro? 
where is the video section at the top uh, uh, let's see uh, if you look at the top it says home videos clips followers so if you click videos it should be there Uh, Christian, very good. Uh, 10 to the minus 6. 10 to the power of negative 6. That's what he said. What are you talking about? <laughs> 1 e negative 6. Okay, divided by the distance. Of course, we don't want to slip on a banana peel. It's 10 centimeters, so that's 0 0.01 meters. All right, so uh, let's go and finish this off. Plug it in, plug and chug. Uh, I can reduce, so one times nine is nine. Yeah, that gives me nine, uh, nine e, nine e three, so that's 9,000. Divided by 0 0.01, and let's go and move the decimal place over twice, one, two, move this one twice, one, two, gives you two more zeros, and voila. Is that it? Did we do it right? Casey, what did you get? Casey, no, Casey. So nine e nine, nine e nine times one e negative six divided by zero point zero one. Oh, wait, why, why is it 0 0.01? That's not right. Uh, it's two spots. Wow, I slipped on a banana peel. It should be 0 0.1. So it's only one time. So we're going to move the decimal place over once. Yay! So uh, we get 90,000. I slipped. <laughs> no, no, you didn't slip. I slipped. Uh, so it should be 0 0.1 meters. There we go. Yep. Uh, so we have 90,000. All right. Ooh, that was tough. <laughs> Now, what does this 90,000 volts mean? That's quite a lot, actually. Uh, well, any any spot, any spot that is a distance of 10 centimeters away, okay, uh, any spot that is 10 centimeters away, so essentially, based on this R distance of 10 centimeters, I can create a circle with radius R So this is the 90,000 volts circle. That's because any point on this circle is 90,000 volts. What? Oh, where's the tardy? Yeah, tardy slip. Gimme, gimme. Okay. So uh, remember, uh, imagine this this positive charge being our big giant metal ball, the uh, the von de Graaff generator. So if you're close enough to it, remember that char the the charges that build up on it will jump to you, and you get shocked. Uh, typically, you know, the breakdown voltage of air was about thirty thousand volts per millimeter. So that's uh, you know, at ten at ten centimeters at ten times that. Uh, so this is technically not enough to see the lightning. Uh, now, if I had a negative charge, of course it would be negative volts. We would plug in a negative Q. Uh, what happens if my distance doubles? What if I am, instead of 10 centimeters, I am 20 centimeters away. What happens to my voltage? 
I'm sorry, I shouldn't say voltage. I should say volt, my electric potential. So now, if I go back to my mountain, instead of being, you know, uh, this isn't drawn very well, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, the line should be down below. Here's the ground. All right. Um, there we go. This is a little better. Uh, if I am 20 centimeters away, somewhere around here, how tall is the mountain now? And that's what we're going to look at. If I double the distance, as you can see, it does decrease. How much? Well, here we go. Uh, so let's do it with variables only, right? Remember, KQ over R gave us 90,000 volts. Instead of plugging in KQ over R, we're going to plug in KQ over 2R. So it's twice the distance. And what is different between KQ over R and KQ over 2R? It's this one half. Okay, so that's how I want you to solve it. That's how I want you to think. That's a, uh, instead of just you know plugging in numbers and trying to get a number, uh, some answer out, uh, look for patterns. Right? You double the distance, you get a 2R, a 2 in the denominator. That means we cut the voltage in, uh, the volts in half. I shouldn't say voltage, I should say volts the volts in half, which is the electric potential. So we have 45,000. Yep. Okay, so the further away you are, the weaker it is, right? When is it zero volts? When do we eventually get to zero volts? Because the further away, it's going to keep going down and down. So when do we get zero? Is there a zero? Ah, think, 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 think. Okay. If I did 4R, 4 times the distance, it would be 1 fourth. If I did 10 times the distance, it would be 1 tenth. Uh, no, keep thinking. Of course, if you have zero charge, you get zero volts. That is true. Uh, but I'm talking about distance. At what distance will you get zero volts? There's no zero, right? Uh, let's use our model to make that prediction, right? Look at this kq over r when will this equation at what distance will you have zero v okay, we're not going to change the q it's the same q but i want to change the distance well what if r was 100 times bigger what happens to your v well at 100 times it would be 100th Right. If R equals 1,000 R, then V equals 1 1,000th of V original. This is capital V, by the way, not velocity. This is potential V. So it seems like the greater the distance, those the weaker or the smaller this number is getting. Right? What if R was one million? If I'm a million times farther away, well, then V would equal one one millionth of the original. Ah. So if R is infinitely far away, If R was infinitely far away, yes, if R was infinitely far away. So we have to be, so if I go back to this model, the mountain model, I have to go f so far out to infinity to get this mountain to flatten. So 
That could be all the way out to infinity. Ooh. Hmm. Only at infinite distance away can I have zero. So that means anywhere that is not infinity, uh, anywhere that is not infinity means we have some sort of electric potential. Okay, similar to gravity, remember there is no such thing as zero g. Zero g is actually zero normal force. Um, I have to be infinitely far away from all masses to have zero gravity. All right. So uh, what if we had two charges? Ooh, two charges. Well, if I had two charges, so let's draw two charges now. I'll do a blue positive one. That is a plus one nano coulombs. Ooh, nano, nano. Infinity sounds pretty far. Yeah, it's pretty far. <laughs> It's going to take us a while to get there. <laughs> uh, uh, let's do a quick, quick head scratcher here. Here's this negative charge that is uh, negative 2 nanocoulombs. Okay. And let's say they are separated by a distance of 10 centimeters, but we want to find the electric potential at this spot. If you can imagine this being a square where all the sides are congruent, okay, kind of like that force problem we did. But don't worry, uh, it has nothing to do with vectors, so this is even easier. Uh, it just looks complex. We don't actually have to do vector components. Um, so this distance is also 10 centimeters. Uh, we're going to ignore sig figs for the day. Uh, just do three sig figs. Um, but what about this distance? How far away is how far away is the first charge? Okay, since it's a square and it's just the diagonal of the square, uh, we know that it should be 10 rad 2. But 10 rad 2 is the same as 0 0.1 rad 2 meters. Zero point one times rad 2 in meters. All right, so we have all the distances. Now we're just trying to find the total volt. So find the sum of all the voltages, or V total, V tot. We'll call this x. At x, okay. So v tot, because it's a scalar, we can just add them. It must be v1 plus v2. Okay. V1. Uh, this is number one, and this one's number two. V1 is the electric potential around. Uh, close. Uh, electric potential around charge number one. Okay. So V1 would be K times Q1 over R1. And V2 is the electric potential around charge number two at that distance. And all we're doing is finding the intersection of these two arcs, the blue arc and the orange arc. Because remember, they create circles around them, right? So remember these circles? Based on the distance, you have a, a circle of voltage, I meaning any point around that circle is that same volts. Uh, and so these two circles are kind of intersecting, giving you the net value. So that would be plus KU2. Let me use a slightly thicker KQ2 over R2. And so this is 9E9 times 1E negative 9 divided by 0 0.1 rad 2 
plus 9e9. And because it's a scalar and v can be plus or minus, you have to plug in the charge if it's negative. So I'm going to plug in negative 2e negative 9 over 0 0.1. So the blue one gave us some positive volts. How many volts? Well, one times the nines cancel. Pew, pew. Uh, one times nine is nine. Nine over 0 0.01 rad two, whatever that is. Nine over 0.1 sqrt two. Okay, how many volts? Chat, how many volts help? Nine divided by point one. Uh, oh, I think you did the total already. I'm just looking for the first one. <laughs> uh, the first one gave me nine divided by point one square root two. Uh, that gives me what six positive sixty three point six three nine six three nine six dot 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 dot. So that's the first one, and then the second one is some sort of negative number, right? So we get eight negative eighteen divided by 0 0.1, which is just 100, 180 negative. And so the total must be 116 volts. All right, so that means that the po the, remember, the positive charge gave us a positive volt. Okay, it was a, a pos like a mountain, whereas the negative charge kind of gave us this trench thing that's below the ocean, and so we basically combined them together to get this overall net result. That means at this spot here, we have a hun negative 116 volts. The orange line is negative 180. The blue line is positive 63.6396 da, 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 volts. And by intersecting them, we intersected their magnitudes, and we, which means just add them up, and that's all. So potential, a lot easier than force. Well, with forces, we'd have to do vector components and it would be crazy, like, uh, it's away from the plus, towards the minus, and blah, blah, blah. And, well, that's electric field, at least. Um, so with, uh, with, uh, with electric potential, we don't have to do vector components. There are no vectors. They're just magnitudes, and you just add them up. All right. That's it for electric potential. Tomorrow we'll cover electric potential energy, put it all together, answer questions from the next Mastering Physics homework, and talk about... Char oh, wait, I, I was supposed to talk about charges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, we need to make a quick chart, uh, chart of data. This will help us uh, get, get going tomorrow. So uh, let's make a chart of particles. Uh, name, uh, charge, mass. I'll put a symbol here. Uh, okay, uh, so First, we have the E minus. E minus is the electron. And we know the charge of the electron is one negative 1 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Okay. The mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Or 10 to the negative 31st power. Okay. Then there's this E plus. 
for every E minus, apparently there's an E plus somewhere out there in the universe called a positron. Ooh. We're going to have Megatron pretty soon. Uh, a positron is the opposite of an electron. It's a, it's similar. It's still made of matter, but it's called antimatter. Um, it behaves similarly, except it has a positive charge instead of a negative charge. And so it's positive 1.6 E negative 19. And the mass of the positron will be the same as an electron, I guess. So Now, uh, it is real. Uh, apparently, you know, you can find them, especially in radioactive or nuclear chemistry and radioactive decay uh, when a when this proton turning into a neutron might shoot off a positron. Uh, I suppose. Um, so this is antimatter. Why is it called a positron instead of a proton? This is not a proton. Uh, it's remember electrons are really tiny, and so this is just as tiny except it has a positive charge instead of a negative charge. So it looks almost like it's the counterpart to the electron. It's kind of like a yin and yang relationship in that for every matter there's also an antimatter. And when matter and antimatter kind of crash into each other, they annihilate and turn into pure energy. Yeah, it's a it's a positive electron, basically. But you don't want to call it an electron because electrons are electrons. This is called a positron. So the same mass, different charge. So just as tiny. Whereas protons are like two thousand times bigger. So they're they're and they behave differently. The protons are stuck inside the nucleus. Uh, and so uh, for every matter of it, apparently there's an antimatter form of it. So technically, somewhere out in the universe, there is antiprotons and antineutrons and so on. But we're not going to discuss too much about those things. Uh, this is the only antimatter that we should know, uh, positron. Uh, P plus is the proton. The charge of a proton is just like a positron, positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So a positron and a proton have the same charge, but they are vastly different in size. A proton has a mass of 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So remember, this is negative 31. Negative 31 means it's even tinier. Uh, so this is only negative 27. I say only 27, but it's also pretty tiny. Okay, a neutron, N0. Um, has no charge. Ooh. And it has the same, oh, technically, it has a slightly heavier mass than the proton, but if you use three sig figs, uh, it's actually the same. Yay, we're gonna use three sig figs, keep it the same. as a proton. Uh, does it matter that it has slightly more mass? Yes, it does. Consider taking AP chemistry to learn more about nuclear chemistry, and I'm sure they'll tell you how nuclear reactions work. All right, the next uh, three are your types of radiation or radioactive particles. There's alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, an alpha particle, just like the symbol, that's what their names are. Alpha, beta, gamma. Okay, or alpha, beta, and gamma. I guess that's how you say it. Um, Consider taking AP Physics C to learn more about how to pronounce Greek letters. Uh, charge of alpha. Alpha is the nucleus of a helium atom. So in, in chemistry, they'll use you know actual uh, periodic table symbols like He42 or something like that. But we're just going to stick to alpha, beta, and gamma with actual Greek letters. Um, the charge of alpha would be Again, inside a helium atom, you have two protons and two neutrons. So the charge of the alpha particle is two times 
1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 because it has two protons. essentially 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19. Uh, the mass of course is four times 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. It's four times because it has two protons which are both 1.67s and then it also has two neutrons. So the mass is and a four times bigger, whereas the charge is only twice as twice as much. Yeah. So alpha particles are actually a weaker form. The the strength of the radiation goes higher as I go down from alpha, beta to gamma. And we know what gamma does, turns you into the incredible hulk. Uh, but alpha particles you can kind of block it off with just clothes or a, a lab coat or something. Uh, just normal you know, clothes will just bounce off the alpha particle. Uh, whereas beta, you technically want to wear some lab coats to protect yourself. It can penetrate. Beta is actually a super high charged electron. This has the same charge. Now the mass uh, is kind of interesting. It is slightly more. I'll put a plus, but uh, we're not really going to use it. Uh, that's because uh, depending on the velocity, uh, you actually start gaining something called kinetic mass. The faster you go, the more massive you become. And so your, your actual mass is your rest mass plus the kinetic mass. And the beta particle kind of gets shot out of the nucleus of an atom during radioactive decay. So it's going to escape with tons of velocity. Therefore, it's going to be slightly more massive, theoretically. Um, gamma is light so it has no charge and no mass whoa but even though light has no mass uh, what's interesting is that it has momentum so you can use like a a solar sail so if you want to be a pirate a space pirate so, and with your pirate ship in space Make sure you have a sail, it's basically a solar panel, that points, uh, actually it should point towards the sun, let's see. Uh, here's the sun. And when the sun shoots out its photons, those photons will crash into your sail and this will accelerate your boat. So you can be a space pirate and use light, well, just like wind, and push your space ship, ha 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 and move forward in space. It's cool. Consider taking AP Physics C to learn more about, actually, yeah, I guess we touch a little bit on APC, but I'm sure chemistry does it as well with, uh, with the energy of light, but we will talk about the momentum of light uh, a little bit more in APC. Uh, what does the star represent again? The star means that uh, <laughs> it is almost like an electron uh, but not quite because it's moving very fast. So I put a little plus here. Uh, uh, as far as our class is concerned, we're not going to deal with beta particles. Uh, you just have to know that beta particles are like electrons. So they have the same charge, negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Okay. The star represents something called kinetic mass mass based on your velocity uh, now with everyday speeds you know technically theoretically if you're running around you're more massive but with everyday speeds that difference is very negligible but for things that move very quickly um, that mass can actually add up and make a difference okay uh, do you have to know all of these? No, uh, you don't have to memorize them, first of all. Uh, here, I'll give you the things that you should know. You should know the electron and the charge of the electron. You should know what a positron is and the charge of a positron. 
You should know what a proton is, charge of a proton. You should know what a neutron is, charge of a neutron. You should know what alpha particle is, and the fact that it is twice as much as a proton, and four times heavier. You don't actually have to know the numbers, you just have to know that it's double and quadruple. Double in charge, quadruple in mass. Uh, and you should also know gamma is no charge and no mass. The actual values um, are either given or uh, you know, or you're solving for them, so you don't have to memorize them. Don't need to memorize. Only the check marks. So know the symbols. Actually, you should know the symbols, of course. Uh, know these check marks here in the charge and and the double and quadruple relationship all right that's it for today thank you for tuning in i'll see you next time bye